Welcome, everybody, into the third episode of the Respawn Podcast. My name is Joey Olberding. My name is Colin Rhodes. And my name is Christina Cash. Yes, and we do have Christina Cash here today. Uh, she is our guest of honor for the third episode of the Respawn Podcast. And uh, Christina, you are interesting in the sense that you are the first person we've had on the podcast that is not really affiliated with any of the esports here at Mizzou. Um, you are in the esports media club, but you aren't really uh, involved in, say, Valorant or League or what have you. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I'm more involved with like the media side of things. Uh, I am pretty invested in esports, just not really any of the premier titles that we sort of play here at Mizzou. I'm more interested in games like Counter Strike or something that you know might be a little bit more obscure for people who are familiar with the esports premier titles that we play here at Mizzou. Um, but definitely still a gamer, definitely still follow gaming news, uh, and I really love writing about it, doing articles. So that's sort of my focus um, with the Mizzou Esports Media team. An audience treat. It's uh, fan service for you guys. It's yes, one of you. It's fan service for those who do not play video games to the extent that all these freaks here at Mizzou Esports do. I don't spend do. 40 hours a week playing video games, but I do spend a non-zero amount of time. I'm happy to provide representation for the masses. Yes, and, and that is what this podcast needs. I think this will take us in a bold new direction. Uh, I'm happy to be a trailblazer. So, Christina, what have you been playing lately? Um, lately, I've I've been pretty busy lately. Um, but I have been I've been getting really back into Mario Kart. I really enjoy um games that I can sort of pick up and play, uh, which is why the Nintendo Switch has really served a, a good niche for me. I have a Switch Lite, so it's really easy to pick up and take anywhere. Um, just take a five minute break from studying or working or doing whatever, uh, and I can just play a quick game, uh, do like a time trial race in Mario Kart. Or uh, I'm a big fan of Puyo Puyo Tetris. So I'll do 40 lines in Tetris or something to sort of take a break from whatever I'm working on at the moment. Uh, if I'm, you know, spending long hours studying or working late at night. Um, I really value something that, like, doesn't require as much of a time commitment. But in terms of things that I've been playing a little more seriously when I have some more free time, I'm really excited about the release of Persona 5 Royal for... Uh, I believe now it's on PlayStation 5, Xbox One, PC, um, but it's also on Game Pass. And Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo Switch. Um, but I'm excited because it's on Game Pass. Um, so that means that I can play it on a little bit of a bigger screen um, since this, you can't dock the Switch Lite. Um, sit back with my controller, um, take a load off, play a nice, like, engrossing JRPG. Um, I would also call myself a casual gamer. I do not grind any games. I... Don't really play that many video games, to be honest. I watch a lot of YouTube and Twitch streams, and that's that's where a lot of mine. But I like uh, sort of uh, play video games in the sense of like if I'm watching a video or I'm doing something, uh, I like putting on a video game, playing a video game that I absolutely need to use zero percent of my brain for. Yeah. For, yeah. for instance, like I yeah. I've always wanted to play say Persona Five, Persona Five Royal, and I may do that now that it's on every platform that to ever exist also at the same time since that's a jrpg that that and it has it's a story-based game that requires so much of my focus i'm like i can't sit down for literally like a thousand hours to yeah. just it's, play it's through the game taxing sometimes yeah I, yeah but at some point you kind of do want to get really really like um involved in a story you know or yeah. involved in a game you know you want to dive really deep just like you know you watch it a movie joey like do you want to turn your brain off for the movie or do you like, I guess there's, there's two types of movies, right? Or do you want to get like really invested in the, in the plot and what? And yeah. that's why I sort of play, you know, different types of games depending on my mood. It's like, do I want to turn my brain off? Like Joey said, or do I want to get invested? It's meditating. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I, I would say that in terms of movies, uh, since, since you said it, uh, a movie really needs to like hook me. If it really wants me to pay attention, especially if it's like, an actiony movie it really has to that really has to grip me immediately and that's the same with video games too like i can't tell you the amount of times i bought a game on steam i was like this is gonna be so cool then i played it for like an hour and it was like eh, i don't really like this and mm -hmm. then i just refunded it because i can um <laughs> it's hard for me you know when people are like recommending a game they're like you know this game is really long it takes like 10 hours to yeah. sort of get you into it i'm like oh, i don't know if i can make that sort of time investment like a game really has to sort of grab me i want to be excited you know whenever i pick up a game to play it i don't want to feel like oh well you got to get through this really boring terrible part before you actually yeah. get to play the fun game 
And I think that's something that that's especially underrated when it comes to game development nowadays, because nowadays you'll get games like the new, uh, the new, um, the Sony IP with the red haired girl. You know what I'm talking about? Oh gosh, no, no, I don't. The red haired girl game. Yeah, of course. The red haired girl game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can look it up. Games like. <laughs> no, keep talking about it. Yeah. The, the games like the, <laughs> the red haired girl game. Well, what about it? Yeah. So games like the one with the red haired girl um, <laughs> on, on PlayStation, they had a new version of that game came out the same day as Elden Ring. I might add. Oh, really? Um, which is why I can't Kill remember zone? the name of it. No, oh, you're talking about Horizon Kingdom. Forbidden. Yeah, Horizon. Oh, Horizon. You're talking about Horizon. Yeah, yeah. I was like googling and I was like Sony red haired girl. Yeah. I have no idea I what you're talking about. I always remember. I um, heard the first game was really good. Yeah, but the problem with both of those games is they have insanely long tutorials. Like the tutorial accounts for like ten hours of gameplay. Oh my gosh. Just of, of like learning new things, and it's not even a JRPG. It's like a Breath of the Wild type or something. Like an open world game. Yeah. You know, I'm not opposed to like long tutorials, but it's like if I'm not excited excited while i'm playing a tutorial like if i'm not like interested in the things that like the game is trying to teach me then i'm that's kind of a sign to me like eh, yeah. this one might not be for me i personally would much rather have the game just like throw me in Absolutely. and i just figure it out like I, I don't want the game to tell me what to do see, it depends for me i think it depends on the game I, especially like controls i guess like i don't want to know the controls i i honestly it depends on how complicated the controls are like if they're simple i don't need to be like yeah told however how do you jump i do want to know where to go yes yeah, it makes me so mad when I, it doesn't tell me where to go <laughs> i'm just Open like world games are hard man. For me because it's really easy for me to get sidetracked yeah like, I mean, with we the, all like you mentioned breath ADHD. of the wild yeah. um i will have a goal and then I will just veer off to the left. I'll see like a cool mountain in the distance. And like in a way, that's really exciting. Like it's yeah. it's a really cool sort of it's a game full of discovery. And I really like being able to sort of pursue new things. Um, but at the same time, you do have to finish the game eventually. I probably spent six or seven hours in that game just finding new horses and taking. Oh my god! Because I, <laughs> I would be on a quest I and I'd be shrines. like. Like with yeah. when you get like the little radar, uh -huh. and it's just like you can like detect this off in the distance. Like I'm gonna go on an adventure. Yeah. But but that is the problem with open world games, though, is that there's so much to do, and yet there's really, in a sense, for a game like Breath of the Wild, there's a lot to do. But at the same time, it's like it none of it really matters. It can be overwhelming. None of it matters. It's overwhelming. I wouldn't and call it a problem, though. I think yeah. it can be a problem, really? especially when a lot of it like has no. People love exploration. Yeah. People, people love exploration, but at the Discovery. same time, maybe Breath of the Wild isn't a great example, but a game like Elden Ring, a lot of people just want to fight the bosses and they don't want to have to traverse the open world and mm -hmm. think, ignore yeah. enemies and it stuff like that. It depends on the sort of game. Um, and I think a lot of games do run into that sort of issue where it's like, not necessarily like they try to do too much, but um, especially when it comes to like new entries in a series, um, they'll incorporate new mechanics and things like that that um, newer players might be really excited about, but veteran fans of the series might not be as into. Um, I'm personally not too experienced with like the sort of, uh, excuse me, the sort of Soulsborne series. Uh, I'm bad at video games, so yeah. I don't really play this. Same here. Um, but you mentioned like sort of the example of Elden Ring um, and how people who are really invested in that sort of like grueling gameplay where they just really want to have like a boss rush where they, you know, try and fight as many of these massive enemies as possible. Um, might not be as excited for like exploration and finding new things, sort of like those different elements of the series. So it's really kind of a balancing act when you are sort of like making and designing a game that like you have to keep in mind, how can we incorporate new things and how can we do these things in a way that both will bring in new players and also people who are used to sort of what's happened in the series to this point will be a fan of. I think Elden Ring is an interesting example because a game like Breath of the Wild, sure, it's a sequel for a Zelda game, but it's also completely different from any other Zelda game. The Absolutely. thing with Eld Elden Ring is it is a Soulsborne, so it draws on Bloodborne a lot, it draws on Dark Souls 3, it draws on all these other games, and since those games are not open world, um, at least not to the same extent at all, it doesn't just thrust you in a world, a lot of people who love those games and think that Bloodborne's the best game ever made or something like that, um, they'll be like, well, what I like about Soulsborne's is going through a dungeon, uh, discovering items, and having there be a boss at the end. 
um, while when it's open world, I don't know where I'm going. Well, and to some extent, I think that's really interesting because... I mean, like I said, like, I'm not as big of a fan, but I remember, like, the release of Elden Ring being a really big event. And that might be because I'm not sure um, how much time there was between, like, the release of Bloodborne and the release of Elden Ring. I feel like it was a while. But I feel like also just sort of that new format did bring a lot of new people, you know, into the series and sort of generated a lot of hype about the game. Because I know people were really excited about that. And it's sort of interesting, you know, seeing people talk about, you know, like, the things that they're able to do and accomplish in Elden Ring and just, like that sort of blank canvas that that open world gives you. So like I said, I mean, I think that there's I would probably, a balancing act. I would probably put becoming the Elden Lord on my resume. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you would like that? It was a big moment in my life. I mean, yeah, like I said, like this game was <laughs> this game was talked up. Um yeah, I beat Employers, the that's, Elden that's Beast. Hireable. They see Elden Lord and they're like, this guy means business. Yeah. <laughs> we need to stop talking about Elden Ring though. Yeah. We keep yeah. talking about it. If I had a quarter for every time Joey said, Elden Ring is an interesting example. <laughs> but it is. It is. It's interesting. Oh, really? oh, like no I, said, other... I know nothing about it, but it's, a, it's an interesting game. No other <laughs> game that has come out recently has built up as much hype for itself as we talked about last episode in the podcast and been able to actually live up to it. Yeah. That, so how many hours do you have in this game, Joey? Zero. I've never played it. Uh, so I do want to ask you, Christina... Um, Recently, there was this thing that happened. Uh, there was this network that got shut down, G4 TV, uh, which, uh, for those that are not in the know, was this uh, channel that ran in the early 2000s uh, that focused on video game content. So this was before YouTube. This was before Twitch. Th- this was before Vimeo. This was before what have you. And then it got shut down around 2012, I want to say. But last year, it had a brief resurgence, and it came back onto the airwaves and then just a week ago or so, it got uh, thrown in the can again, and now it is gone. So my question for you, Christine, is pretty simple. Do you think that, like, video game content on television is ever going to, like, work? I feel like it has the potential to work, but I feel like no network is going to want to make it work. That's actually, I, I like that stance a lot. The networks themselves have to shift a lot for them to be like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, like, this is totally what our audience wants. You it's know? something you have to consciously like choose and want to make work um and i want to i want to pick on a specific example actually there's this show um the name escapes me um there's the show on g4 was hosted by um xavier woods who is professional wrestler but who is somebody who has done content on youtube um for wwe uh his, his his real name is austin creed uh his sort of stage name is xavier woods um but he on g4 tv was co-host of attack with the show and the show called arena um but he also had previously made youtube videos on the sort of standalone channel it was a uh, up up down down and so he sort of made a transition from you know not only a professional wrestler but also a youtube star and a sort of personality on that platform and then when g4 relaunched you know, he was sort of excited to be a part of that sort of more traditional over the air broadcast format. So I think it's interesting that sort of pivot from YouTube to to TV that that sort of involved when he became a host on G4. And now with the closing of G4 um, as sort of an over the air channel, I feel like brands are going to be focusing now back on that YouTube platform. Uh, that's my understanding that G4 did do YouTube content once they relaunched the platform. Yeah. Um, but the original incarnation of that was that sort of, you know, over the air block programming. Um, they had things like Attack of the Show. They broadcast the X Games. They did all of these sort of like gamer oriented, like, Extreme. they did it. American Ninja Warrior was a very big thing on that thing. And it was like, yeah, like you said, like that sort of extreme like marketing hip for the youth hip for the youth that was very popular (laughs) in the late aughts early 2010s yeah i was gonna ask like what content exactly did they have yeah i mean like i said um it's very it's very tony hawk pro skater 2 um as i've said was it was it like a news show or was Um, it like sort of so they had like um like a name dropped attack of the show that was really one of their big sort of programs and they did have like you know sort of gaming news um they had like interviews and stuff with different personalities it was also like sort of in like a humorous like yeah it was like skits way yeah they had like yeah. skits and stuff um but it was all just sort of like focused very much at that like 
sort of teenage male demographic um, in that sort of time period. So like I said, like they had all the gaming stuff. They had, um, like I said, American Ninja Warrior. They did the X Games. They did um, all these sorts of things. Um, but nowadays, you know, like you asked, do I think it could thrive as like an over the air station? And uh, I don't know. Because like I said, I think that the, you know, the networks behind it would have to want to make it work. And yeah. I feel like nowadays, especially when you see all of these, you know, like broadcasting conglomerates sort of moving towards focusing on their streaming services. Like you have, I was trying to watch a sports game the other day um, and I don't own a TV. So I was trying to watch it, you know, online and it turns out it was only on ESPN plus. So yeah. they have that sort of streaming service. Uh, and I was able to find it, you know, being broadcast by like a local affiliate online. But, you know, it's like all of these places are sort of moving towards either putting content exclusively on streaming. Like you've got all of these like, you know, Netflix Originals, HBO Max, Apple TV Plus, all of these shows that, you know, are going on and they're winning awards, but they're all exclusive to streaming. And I feel like if a network was to bring back a sort of gaming platform, I feel like that would sort of be... The format that it would take i don't know if like amazon would maybe do it with you know their ownership of twitch uh amazon prime things like that um i don't know if i'm not really sure who owns g4 off the top of my head but i don't know if you know they would be interested in bringing back sort of like a gaming oriented streaming service to me that just kind of sounds like a youtube channel for like ign or something that's like its own mini streaming service you know what i'm saying because yeah. First of all, it already has like news It basically all these niches that I feel like G4 had are commonplace on the internet now. You can get gaming oh. news anywhere. You yeah. can get comedy skits anywhere. We were just talking before about college humor before we even started the podcast. And like yeah. that's that's gamer humor. I, I feel like all the niches are, are have moved online. And I I feel like you can't cultivate a video game tv show especially when you're trying to aim at a, at a younger demographic which you certainly would try to when you can get the same content online you can get it without ads and you can get it um more more niche to your specific niche you can get things curated to you so like if you're seeing content online um on on g4 about say a game you don't really care about like a fifa game yeah. yeah, you're going to change the channel. Well, if you just go on, on IGN, you can look up a game that you really care about, like, I don't know, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and you can find all the Kirby in the Forgotten Land content you could ever possibly dream of. Mm -hmm. I was going to... I was going to ask if there's any, like, Let's Players. I was going to flip the script on you again, Joey. Are there Please. any Let's Plays on, like, Netflix or Hulu or anything like that? Are there, like, like the other side of it? No. Know? I will I feel say like that'd be a licensing nightmare. I will say the closest thing to that was um there's this YouTuber by the name of Scott the Waz. Uh -huh. And uh he had his own content actually broadcast on G four yeah, on, yeah. on the television network uh before it got canned, obviously. <laughs> um that's probably the closest thing. I know that Disney XD, I'm not sure if they used to, but they used to have this thing where they took uh video content from some youtubers like markiplier jacksepticeye people like that and they would broadcast that on disney xd but they would I like censor that. they would like censor everything they would cut it down um they would basically run it through a, a land of we're gonna make this applicable for the mouse the mouse has to like this content yeah sort of reminds me of like um america's funniest home videos how that kind of died out because of you know we got like youtube we got like tiktok yeah yeah i, mean, I think it's still around in some way but i, I think it's literally know, just actually. like recycling well, viral videos i think for that show it's different because i think video games always skew towards a younger audience yeah. well everybody likes a funny video of a dog uh jumping up and down and being all wacky yeah all, all age demographics like that i'm a, I'm like a that. fan of dogs i don't i don't know if i would necessarily say that like video games exclusively skew towards the younger demographic maybe i'm just like misinterpreting what you mean by younger but i mean my parents are gamers i know like plenty of people who you know 
are older than us who play video games. So, like, I, I definitely don't disagree that, like, maybe your 75-year-old grandfather does not <laughs> enjoy a Yeah, but if you're talking about, game, like, but... but if you're talking about most people's parents, most of yeah. them I think don't that's fair. I think games, you know? my experience isn't necessarily typical. So you're but... a gamer family as well? I'm a, I am a, I'm a child of a gamer family, yeah. What, a, yeah, what, talk to us about talk, it. Talk to me about it? Or yeah, what talk is to that you about like? It. What's that like? Um, means I grew up playing video games. You know, that's sort of how I got my start as a gamer. You know, that was something that I was always sort of surrounded with as a youth. Um, was it, like, encouraged? I guess you could say it was encouraged, yeah. I mean... Um, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Yeah, no, I mean, the first, the first game I really have, like, vivid memories of playing is, like... Um, Super Mario World. Yeah, yeah, but but did you play like with your family? With my family, not as much. I mean, my parents were both working all the uh -huh. time, so you know it was kind of hard to like find a time to sort of sit down and play video games. Um, we actually played a lot of board games. Too. Yeah, gaming gaming with my family isn't something that was this big of a thing, but you know it was like I got to sort of play the games that like my parents grew up with because it's you know it's something that we kept around, and so you know like I would watch my dad play video games more than I would like play video games with him yeah so but, it was very natural yeah it was it was very much yeah. like an accepted mm -hmm. part of the household what and about you joey was that like that for you uh well growing up i had two older brothers mm -hmm. oh, um okay. so it, it was a little bit different in the sense that they were playing video games my parents were the opposite of gamers they could not be further from it yeah um might as well but my brothers did play video games so like you know i grew up watching my brothers play tony hawk games and playing um mario and playing what have you uh they they used to play a lot of the james bond games like nightfire mm -hmm. Russia with love classic stuff like that <laughs> um i had cousins that i'd visit that had you know like ps2s so i played the sly cooper games great games yeah i, love was, a, I was a big ps2 um, kid as well and i only really had nintendo consoles until i got an xbox 360 when i was like 11 um but before that it was all it was on nintendo so i just played all that stuff and you know i i i guess that having two older brothers they, they don't play video games as much as i do but i will say i've been on the internet since i was like five or six mm -hmm. uh give or yeah, take same. and so i've been watching video content for a long time and you know when you're a little kid you're interested in video games and stuff like that uh just like you know fun haha fun stuff like that and so uh i would say watching and getting into the niches of the internet for video game stuff made me made me fall down the rabbit hole a little bit and now i'm here doing a mizzou gamer podcast oh, well yeah. i well i feel like my two brothers uh who are four years older than me and eight years older than me respectively i uh, did not grow up in that environment so i think that's different for us because we're sort of the start of a demographic that really did grow up on the internet like completely yeah mm -hmm. i mean that's that pretty much mirrors my experience. I was very much an online child. So I think that had a big impact on me being here today. Yeah, since you talk about the Xbox 360, I have a funny story. Um, so it's Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. I'm about 12 years old. The new mm -hmm. Xbox One has just released. Okay. Yeah. Me and my brother, my older brother, he's like, uh, I think, six years older than me. We're very excited for the Xbox One. And we think Santa's coming, and we think he's coming in hot. <laughs> And so they, there's this one present, and it's behind the tree, and it's a literal, like, box, right? Like, it's yeah. shaped like exactly it's like an Xbox One is in there. And we try to open it, and my parents are like, no, like, save that one for the end, you know? And we're <laughs> like, oh, we got it. Oh, boy. Like, so you we got get, it in the bag. You're 100% sold. Oh, yeah. I'm 100% sold that this is an Xbox One. I don't even need to open it. So we go, to the, we go through all the presents. It's the final present. We open it up. It's a goddamn panini maker. You didn't get your <laughs> Nintendo 64 moment. Oh and my God. I got so legitimately mad at my dad. They they said to save the panini maker for the end? Yes. Are you kidding? Is that yes. your most disappointing Christmas present? Yes. It's gotta be. I mean, <laughs> I, don't I don't think you can get much sure. worse. I don't know if how you can top that. I, I've had some disappointing yes. Christmases, but never anything as bad as Panini Maker. Yeah, yeah. it was like the family gift, too, you know, because they like everybody gets like a gift and then yeah, there's yeah. like a big one, you yeah. know? And that was the big one. And I then mean, I, could go for a I think, a, I think not even a month later, um, 
me and my brother went and sold our 360 and got the Xbox One, you know? Yeah. My yeah. friend brought that up to me last night. He was like, remember when you got a Panini Maker instead of an Xbox One? And I was like, no, I actually don't remember that. <laughs> did, oh did thank you, you for, thank, thank you for, for reminding that you, horrible memory. You, you blocked it out. I did. I trauma blocked it. Wow. I totally Incredible. trauma blocked it. I don't blame you. I would have. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... I remember a big problem I had around when the Xbox One came out in terms of Christmas presents I wanted. Um, around that time, the Wii U had just come out. And as I said, I grew up playing like all Nintendo. So I didn't really have a lot of interest in the PS4 because to me, I, I mean, it didn't it didn't have Mario. What, what was I going to do if I'm not playing What's Mario? What's the point of a video game console without Mario? Um, but that's besides the point. So I really, really wanted a Wii U. Unfortunately, the name Wii U is very similar to another console called oh, no. the Nintendo Wii. Um, and so I would, <laughs> I asked for like three years straight for my parents to get me a Wii U because I wanted to play, you know, whatever games were on the Wii U. Um, and every time my parents would be like, but you already have a Wii. And I was like, no, it's different. No, no, no. That was so Joey, did you ever get your Christmas wish? I did. I got it like three years after I initially asked. Um, uh, are you a Wii U enjoyer to this day? No. Wii U? That sucked. Yeah, it was, it was a bad console. Bad I have console. to. Can for, I can I put forward a controversial opinion? Please. You can, but I, for me and I think everybody else, it goes from the Wii and like think like Wii Sports, you know, and then straight to the Switch. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's fair. I mean, I don't think that that's a bad opinion to have, but I I have to admit, I'm gonna put myself on the cross a little bit here. I'm a Wii U enjoyer because I can see the vision. I don't think that it necessarily lived up to you know what everybody wanted it to be i think the switch is a better console in every single way i think it does the things that the wii u set out to do yeah it it does it better the wii u didn't really do anything special or unique but i like it had a a cool like controller i like that one person could use and it was always i was upset about that (laughs) yeah like the fact that you can't have more than one gamepad or when yeah. you try to play it off the tv you had to still be sitting like directly in front were you an TV. average uh 3ds enjoyer as well i still to this day love the 3ds i use my i don't actually have a 3ds i have a 2ds xl but i use it regularly yeah. to play games that is a pick of play if i've mm-hmm. ever seen one i agree yeah I have to say, though, like, in terms of Wii U, some of, you know, some very good games came out for that system. I think the problem is just that they re-released them all for the Switch. Yeah, they did. So All, now, all the games are back on the Switch All the now. games are back on the Switch. All the people who did not enjoy them the first time around can. I, I will say, my hot take, I, I already said I don't like the Wii U. I also don't really like the Switch. Really? No, I don't. The Switch has had a lot of problems. A lot of problems. I, yeah, I many. do understand, like, it has They break, had... man. Like, almost I, all of because, them break. Because I think I think you just said, Chris, or maybe you did, Colin, that like the Switch is just better than the Wii U in every way. Uh-huh. Well, that's almost true. The only difference is the Wii U has way better processing power yeah. than the, than the Nintendo Switch, and it's not even close. Yeah, you also get eight gigabytes. Yeah, which that's is nothing. I mean, I remember I saw that, and I was like, "What the heck?" And we got it like for Christmas, like this last year, and we yeah. downloaded the jackbox party pack and breath of the wild and that's all the games we could download (laughs) (laughs) see that's interesting i mean okay to be fair i just remember that i do have an sd card in my system which makes it a lot easier to store a ton of games well that's the thing Um, is that okay you you have to buy well yeah yeah, you you need need to buy the sd card card. you need to buy you know no but like i was just reminding myself like yeah like i was about to say oh well i have like a whole bunch of games but to be fair i also am a physical game buyer i do not really download games i value having that sort of like really phys- yeah I-, I value having a physical copy of games i mean especially like it makes huh. it easier if you want to like say resell it in the future like if you just end up not really enjoying it um i don't really know I, a lot of people anymore who even I like collecting ha- things yeah that's fair so you know it makes me happy i don't want to say it makes me happy to have things but, you know it's fun to sort of like get that experience of like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna buy a new game and i'm gonna get it in the mail and i'm gonna open up it's like it's like christmas whenever you want you know it's like <laughs> i enjoy getting to you know take that game put it in the console so like i guess maybe yeah I mean, you just like want you that said, experience yeah, yeah i like the experience and like like you said like a lot of people i guess i didn't really think that like people are buying games digitally now yeah i, so I mean like you have to it's a miracle because you mentioned breath of the wild and i was like well i've never had any issues with that but then i remember i have it physically and that game is massive yeah, and I didn't yeah. have to download it. It is a miracle that GameStop is alive right now. It is. <laughs> it's a miracle its... that they are paying their employees with 
with what money? I feel like it's in <laughs> hospice right now. It, I yeah. feel like it's on. It's, dude, it's been time. a hosp. It's been in hospice for ever. Yeah, yeah. Ten like years actually at this point. forever. At, at this point, GameStop is literally more of just like. It's basically become like a hot topic where it sells you your Rick and Morty <laughs> it makes shirt. Me really hot upset. topic. And your Overwatch how hats. How do you guys feel? Do you guys know about uh, like the ThinkGeek GameStop thing where they like merged and now GameStop sells all like the ThinkGeek gamer merchandise? No, I do not. Um, I mean, that's basically the gist of it. ThinkGeek was a very prolific sort of like nerdy store. Um, it, they sort of made and sold, you know, video game merchandise, like officially licensed stuff. And then either they bought GameStop or GameStop bought them. And then GameStop started selling their inventory in their stores. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree that GameStop has sort of gone the way of Hot Topic in terms of. In terms of actually what they sell. I mean, it being feels a like, husk of their former selves. Yes. And, and <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's interesting because I don't know the last time I stepped into a GameStop because I do buy like everything digitally now. It's mm-hmm. just more convenient. Yeah. It's the same price it's easier and like it's not like you're gonna get anything from the game case itself that's not aesthetic because it's not like they have like game manuals anymore no everything's digital now yeah if you're gonna have pre-order bonuses either yeah if you're gonna have a game manual or you're gonna have a pre-order bonus you're gonna be able to get it also online and it's not gonna be like a physical thing like i remember uh pre-ordering pokemon x and y and i remember getting this big map of the region i have that I, also I have did it that. too and I, and I thought oh it's so cool you know i i pre-order every game and then when they start getting rid of it i'm like well what's what's the point especially you know if the, the game's bad you know do you know what the pre-order bonus for the new like upcoming pokemon games is no i do not it's like um you, you get like extra like revives and max potions it's it's not even like a physical item anymore it's literally just like a small amount of items that you would find in the game anyway yeah well that, that's, i was so upset when i heard that that's yeah. every game they do that for like call of duty as well yeah, yeah it's all get, like a cool stuff. gun skin like i know borderlands 3 it's like you got like the special edition Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think don't ask me like about Borderlands Three, but I, I think people like that. I think I mean, people like having stuff in the game. I like, I like the idea of pre-order bonuses, but I miss when they were like a physical thing you could hold. Yeah, I mean, I hate to bring it up, but like, you see, like NFTs right now. Like, yeah, we are literally just like slowly but surely like becoming in the, the game. Metaverse. Yeah, the metaverse. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I was really talking about. But it's all just in the game now. You know, it's all digital. There's no like physical to the metaverse. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a change instead of like i guess the way that i grew up you know having i i when i was a child i had a lot of physical items i yeah. didn't really have a lot of uh toys. non-fungible tokens <laughs> yeah so. kids don't get toys I anymore they that. get iphones yeah that's yeah. that's strange to me it's insane i i didn't have a phone until my, i was in sixth grade and even then it was not a very good phone Same my kid so. is not getting a phone until high school and well i had to ride the bus maybe not high school but yeah maybe like my parents didn't want me on the bus you know as a little 12 year old with no way to contact them so i got a phone i uh i remember um when i was growing up i had this really bad phone uh that i got and I remember the worst thing about it being that it did not have an app store. And so I could not play Angry Birds. Oh, and I was no. really, really sad about that. It's like when I got my Chromebook and found out you can't download anything. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, we, had, yeah. We, we had like an inventive bunch at school. We had people like trying to get around oh, like all the here. district imposed blocks in yeah. as many ways as possible. My, we had people on uh, Virtual Boy Advance. Just playing nice. Pokemon every day. My my workarounds for for all the uh, school blockage stuff was I found a way. Uh, first of all, I found a way that you could just like move files if you had a USB drive onto your computer. So like I played Undertale on my computer and yeah. stuff like that, and it was great. Um, but also I used the Wayback Machine to like go back back to the past um, and. Basically, with the Wayback Machine, you can access any site because it gets past the the blocker since that website itself is not blocked by school admins. So you can use that to get into any other website. I'm pretty sure we were the reason that that site got blocked by our school admins. We really? We had a lot of times... Town of Salem. I don't know if you guys ever played Town yeah, of yeah. Salem. Oh, yeah. Town of we Salem. were we For were sure big in Town of Salem uh, when I was like in eighth grade. That's when we got our Chromebooks. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure like my bunch is the reason that that got blocked like we 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 came into class one day fully ready to sit down and play around and we were just like you should feel proud of that that's pretty impressive i feel like i don't know if necessarily me but me and my friends i feel like we're the reason a lot of things are blocked at school now (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah we my 
I guess my class, because in high school we were the first class to have iPads, and we would just game in class the entire time. Yeah. So we I were only the had reason, iPads once. Uh, we were the reason that um, they had to put like so much restrictions on the gaming and what you can download and where you can play and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we only had like a one class with like a set of Chrome or a set of iPads. We were always like our entire district is one to one Chromebooks now for like six through twelve. I think um, six, elementary schools. Sixth yeah. graders get Chromebooks. Yeah. Wow. Everybody wow. in my from huh. middle school to high school got Chromebooks. I think from I got a typewriter. First <laughs> to fifth grade, I swear to God, we have really iPads. not like an actual typewriter, but one of like the it, it was like an electronic. It was shaped like a laptop, but it wasn't a laptop. But you could exclusively just like you word could process. On yeah, it? you could just like type on a notepad. And it would print it out. Yeah, Weird. like I said, we didn't get Chromebooks until I was in eighth grade, so I didn't have any of that fancy stuff in my young. I mean, it wasn't years, fancy; but... it was a beautiful. <laughs> no, that oh, does no, not I'm sound sure fancy at all. <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying, like, I didn't have a Chromebook when I was younger. I didn't have an iPad when I was. Dude, imagine well. being like way back in the day, and you're like, "I got a typewriter for Christmas." No, <laughs> and it's that fancy. would be hype. That would be Honestly, hype. Yeah. I would be excited. I'd be down for having a typewriter. I probably wouldn't use it, but it's cool used to look one. at. I'm gonna I've write. I've used one before. It's not Colin, like. Colin, is it okay if I submit all my articles from now on no. after being printed on no, a typewriter? No, absolutely not. No. Oh. Typewriters yeah. are so <laughs> inconvenient, though. I wish that they weren't because they look so cool. I mean, it's just can't, you cannot like realistically use that. A- anyways, it's interesting. Um, my school. I mean, obviously, I said my graduating class isn't very big, but we didn't have iPads or anything. We just sort of had the the Chromebooks. Um. But it's interesting because we were given these laptops, but also they were not very restrictive if we just brought our own laptops. They oh, didn't yeah, really we care. brought our own all the time. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a laptop in middle school. It's crazy. I didn't have a laptop didn't... in middle school, but in you high school, did. I brought mine all the time. It's, it's interesting. To bring it back a little, um, my first laptop I got uh, was uh, part of another disappointing Christmas um, <laughs> in which it was, a- it was actually my birthday, I think, but... Um, I, for the longest time, had wanted a laptop because I was sick of using my family's desktop computer that literally had Microsoft Vista on it and was last, like, important to culture in, like, 2005. Um, I did not care anymore, and I wanted a laptop for my own. So (laughs) I did not care anymore. A year straight, if not longer, I begged my parents, like, please, can I have a laptop? I want a laptop Um, and all that. And my birthday rolls around and they say, Joey, we got you something very special. It's something that we know you need. Uh, and here Socks. it is. Here's a brand new phone. Uh, and I was so upset so because I already had a phone. It was the one, to be fair, it was the one I mentioned earlier that didn't have any apps. So I Was finally, it like an iPod? No, it was just. It was just like a feature It was phone. a really bad Samsung phone from like, it was mm. my oldest brother's hand-me-down. Oh, who was eight years older than me. Um, and it was probably from like 2007, maybe. I mean, it had an internet browser, so that was awesome. But it basically had, it was so technically a smartphone. On the go. So but, you were um, disappointed. I was disappointed. Did you get mad at your Yes, parents? I did. And honestly, I do not blame myself. Dude, how crazy is that? Like, how privileged are we to get mad at presents we get? <laughs> how no, insane but, is that? But I will... I will pat myself on the back. I'm not happy that I got mad, but I do understand my younger self's frustration. Yeah. I'm still kind of upset about it, to be honest. You're still I you're think, still not I over think it. You mentioned, not really. Like, being privileged to get upset at the presence. I think it's less getting upset at the fact that you received an item and more like getting upset at your parents for like being out of touch with like what Exactly. You want. I, I basically begged to them for a year straight, hey, you they know They knew that you they, wanted they, a laptop. They knew that you yeah, wanted a laptop did. and they're like, they got hey, you a phone instead. We got for, you something special. For whatever reason reason you know probably they were gonna get you a phone regardless yeah so well killed two birthdays birthdays with one joey yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. as As the old adage goes exactly yeah (laughs) um no it's it's funny though um and yeah i had that and i had that phone for like six years so that's a long lifetime on a phone so i mean it worked out it worked out and then i accidentally chucked it at a wall and broke it um, but that's See, a different story. Phones... That was after six years. So. That was after yeah. six years. So. See, I've never broken a phone screen. Mine just tend to blow up in other spectacular ways. My last phone just didn't turn on. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> Ever? it just gave up the ghost. It. I like went to went to check my my socials one day. I woke up and I was just like, well, guess it won't today. 
So I had to buy a new phone unexpectedly because it just decided it didn't want to work. Did anymore. you ever figure out what the problem was? No, they were like I took it to the the, the Verizon store or whatever. Like I took it to like a phone place. I don't remember. But they were just like, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, That's weird. Just, that that sucks. That is such a cool story, bro. It's <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> well, what is what is uh, the last time you had a phone break or die? Or I my never never never, really? never lost never broken. I am the golden child, as my mom says. I mean, I've never, like, broken one. I don't think... No, it's never cracked. I mean, I've had, like, an issue with, like, the SIM card before, but, Mm -hmm. you know, you just go in and you're like, hey... And he's like, "Hey, it's good now." And I'm like, "Thanks." <laughs> and so that's I the said, whole transaction. Okay, the thing, the thing you have to remember: most of my phones are hand me downs from my parents. This phone that I have right now, currently, is actually the only phone I've ever like purchased new. My last phone. I don't think I've ever lost my phone. That's I never crazy. lost my phone. Huh. My la- actually, it. you know, I said my last phone is the phone that randomly died. No, that was the phone before. That was like an S six that my dad had he gave to me because he got like the new s20 or whatever and then the phone that i got after the s6 died was like a budget samsung phone and that had this really cool and fun issue where it (laughs) decided to just like not charge oh yeah yeah. like it would just randomly just decide not to and i did have one phone i think that's it might have been the phone I had before the S six that was like it would die like eighty percent. What about you, Joey? Um, I've had a lot of battery issues. Well, I've never really had battery issues. I've had a lot of charger issues. In terms of phones, um, the only two times I can remember cracking my phone are my last phone I got before this one. I accidentally chucked at a wall, as I mentioned. How did you? I- do you, you want to talk about it? I are you, are you ready? If you'd like true. me to. It actually has to do with video games, which this whole podcast is about. Um, I was Sometimes. playing the game uh, MLB The Show 20. Uh, so okay. this was, I guess, a year Are, are we raging ago. right now? Oh, we were. Oh, yeah. Um, and I forget exactly what happened, but I was just in a frustrated mood. I was losing. <laughs> and honestly, the point of the game is that you don't want to lose. Uh, so I wanted to win. <laughs> Um, and so I was playing the game and I think what happened was I, um, swung at a pitch that was outside the strike zone badly. I should not have swung at it. And I got really mad and, um, just frustrated at the game. So I picked up my phone and I, I don't know what I was going to do, but I was like, I was like moving my arms around. I was like, ah, and then I accidentally released the phone and it actually, it did not hit a wall. It actually hit a picture. It hit a picture frame. Oh, that's um, worse. A big, like, framed poster. And it, it broke not only the phone and the entire screen shattered, but it also broke uh, the poster. And it went all over this couch I had in my basement. Oh, and so no. then I had to vacuum it all out. I had to go through the couch and individually pick out, like, pieces of glass. Yeah. Um, and then I also had to get a new phone. That's awesome. Um, and it, I, I will never forget the sound of the phone hitting the glass and absolutely shattering it. It was, it was really, first of all, it was very loud. I mean, you could hear it anywhere, but also it was just like, it, it was just the truly realization of, oh my God, what did I just do? Yeah. And uh, yeah. it is funny. One time, freshman year, I spilled milk on my laptop. Oh no. And it broke. And I went into Wood. the repair shop and I was like, is there anything you can do about this? I spilled some milk on it, and he like he like looked at it, and then he came back and he was like, "Well, they say not to cry about it, but it's pretty doomed." And I was like, "You That's really had to, that. didn't you?" <laughs> yeah. And he was uh, like, "Yeah, I had to at some point. It was pretty funny." And I, was I like, mean, if you work fair. in a laptop repair shop covering spills on electronics, I feel like you know yeah. you gotta keep that in your back pocket. <laughs> That's good though. I mean, I, sh- shouts out to that guy. Yeah. Sorry about your laptop, but that sucks, shouts man. out. Yeah. It's funny now. It's hilarious now. It's, actually, it's good uh, in retrospect. Yeah, in the moment, it was not fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Christina, very much for joining us. Thank Thank you, Colin, for being my co-host, I guess. You're welcome. And uh, hey, if you have any ideas for what we should talk about next, let us know in the comment section below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening on any of the other um, applications that podcasts go on to, uh, share with us and let people know that this is a podcast that exists. Or don't. I really won't care either way, but I really would appreciate it. Um. Thank you very much, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Upcoming next week, 
we have Lydia talking about scary games. It's our Halloween special. Yes. And then following that, hopefully we have Kevin Reap or the next week. But Kevin Reap will be on within the next two episodes. He um, started the Mizzou Esports program. So he's going to be a very a very fun episode for sure. A lot of people know him. Yes, and it will be a great time, and you definitely need to tune in. You oh, will yeah. not be able to live your life unless you tune in. So you have to come. Make sure you do that, and thank you for listening. See you next time.